I was going to talk to you guys about is smear frames. So this is where you stretch your body, stretch the actual shape of the body to, tr to help the transition from one screen space to the other. And uh, the image here is, is uh, Daffy Duck. No, he's not. Donald Duck. So you can see his head probably started up here. He's going to here. And rather than just pop the head from there to there, the whole shape is elongated just to lead the eye across. And um, the way that you would do this in Maya is that you would, you know, either just scale the head or use a deformer like a lattice or something to, to actually reshape his head to create that kind of a shape out of his, out of his anatomy. And uh, one of the nice things about doing this is that you get a really nice, clean, unconfusing uh, transition. There's no, um, there's no messy uh, shapes in there. It's very clean and clear. You can you see the thing sort of move across very, very cleanly. One of the the downsides of smears, however, is that you can see again in this image that if you if it's on the screen for too long. You can see the, the change of volume of your character. If you look at that Daffy's head, not Daffy, Donald, sorry. Uh, Donald's head is probably at least twice as big. And you get away with it with, in one frame, but I think if you were to see that for two or three frames, you'd feel that his head grew. You know, So that's the downside of smear frames. You have to be very careful about uh, them not leading to uh, feeling that your volumes are changing, growing and shrinking. And so she's got a, le a lot less of that stretchy, cartoony stuff going on. So uh, you can see how that st the stylistically they chose to play one more cartoony than the other as a deliberate choice to kind of, uh, you know, support the, the type of character that is in this. So um, if you look here, you can just see that when he comes in, you see his hand just stretching in. His whole body is stretched. So those are kind of the, the smear frames. So there's no real blur going on in there. You know, some some. I'll show that in another uh, clip later. But some some studios were doing more sort of whiz lines and stuff. This, there is no whiz lines here. It's clear shapes. They're just stretched to occupy the screen space where those smears would be, where those uh, whiz lines would be. So it's, what I was saying earlier about they've, they've chosen to make him very cartoony and very malleable and stretchy and, and uh, lots of smear frames and all of the tricks. And with the girl, they've held off to, to support her character. And if you look here, when, she, when he treads on this um, plank, it just miraculously appears. Um, she goes up in the air, and rather than have her have all that sort of stretchy, overlappy stuff uh, with you know changes of volume, they've kept her stiff as a board to show that she's kind of a more serious, stiff character. The next one is uh, that was I want to talk about is multiples. So I'm sure you're all aware of what multiples are, but just to just in case to clarify it, it's when you have multiple body parts instead of stretching the the, the, the shape that you're tr trying to show do the transition on instead of stretching it and smearing the, smearing the shape you keep the volume you just draw multiple versions of them to cover the the uh, area that you're trans transfer trans uh, transitioning from to so if this is the start point of the head and you're arriving here if you just popped over again, that the eye would have a hard time following that. But um, you could either stretch the head, which might be quite disturbing on the face because you'd have these big long eyes, uh, or you can do these multiple versions. Which is, in this particular image, you can see it's a really good choice because he's obviously looking around. You know, so his eyes looking at everything is kind of what you're trying to explain. Is you know, he's, he's frantically looking at everything. Where is everything? So it's having, you know however many eyes are there, like 20 eyes, it kind of strengthens that idea. So that, that would be a reason why you would choose a multiple in, in this particular example over a smear, so that you see all the eyes looking, rather than just stretching them into one band of eyes, which would also work visually, I'm sure, but it would create a different feel, you know. 
So the way to do this in, in 3D would be just to duplicate your your uh, geometry of your character. So, you know, in this case, just duplicating the head 10 times and just positioning them and then, and then obviously try, uh, keying on and off their visibility. So and one of the uh, advantages of this technique over the smear is that you maintain volume. You don't feel like there's, um, you know, a growth of, a growth of uh, volume or shrinking of volume. So again, the analogy with the, uh, the character being coming out of the belt, you know, the classic Warner Brothers where the bell hits the, the belt, they're inside the bell and it boom, and they come out and they're still vibrating. This would be a good choice there because you want to probably keep it on for a while. So you don't want to feel like it's just grown. You want to see the, the right volume, you know. So the downsides of the doing using multiples is that if it is, say, a, a head trans, transition or a physical body transition where you're going from one place to the other, if you have a lot of them over lots of frames, it can be quite a distraction. You, you, you'll have a lot of detail on the screen to take in. So they work best when it's, you know, just for one or two or three frames because they just sort of bridge that gap. But if you keep them on, it can be a real distraction. Obviously, there's exceptions to that rule, like the bell ringing one, where you won't just have that kind of distraction and noise because it's there. that's the idea. And uh, the other the other problem with multiples is they can be very time consuming in 2D and in 3D. Obviously, in 2D, having to draw this rather than just one uh, coyote head would take you a lot longer. And it's the same in 3D. If you have to do, we're doing a lot of multiples and stuff in peanuts at the moment, and obviously, there's the time it takes to bring in another rig and then pose the second rig. And it also slows down your scene because uh, you've got two rigs in there. If, you're, if, that's a, if that's a factor, you know, if you're working with rigs that are slightly heavy, you're, you can be doubling or tripling or quadrupling the, uh, the heaviness of your scene and you might not get you know, real-time playback anymore. So that's the, the kind of downside with the multiples in 3D.